Today, we're going to discuss anaerobic glycolysis in red blood cells, the role of 2,3-BPG, 2,3-DPG, and the Boer effect. Human body is an extremely complex structure with a multitude of processes and reactions occurring simultaneously every moment, and whether we are sleeping or awake, working or resting, it requires a constant supply of energy to keep it going every second of every day. This energy is provided by ATP, produced in each cell by glycolysis, either aerobic which means in the presence of oxygen or anaerobic means in the absence of oxygen. The oxygen required by the aerobic glycolysis is transported from the lungs to the rest of the body by the red blood cells. These red blood cells bind the oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin. And although they carry plenty of oxygen, Ironically, they cannot use this oxygen themselves and are entirely dependent on anaerobic glycolysis for fuel because they lack mitochondria and the enzymes for Krebs cycle. Now let's have a look at the basic steps involved in this anaerobic glycolysis. First, the glucose transported from the blood into the cells is converted into glucose 6-phosphate by the enzyme hexakinase by utilizing one molecule of ATP and releasing ADP and hydrogen ion. Now this glucose 6-phosphate is converted into its isomer fructose 6-phosphate by the enzyme glucose phosphate isomerase, followed by the formation of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate by the addition of a phosphate group obtained from ATP by phosphofructokinase 1, Another enzyme called aldolase catalyzes a reaction for the formation of three carbon molecules, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dehydroxyacetone phosphate, from the 6-carbon fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. These two molecules are interconvertible by triose phosphate isomerase. Because of the production of two 3-carbon molecules, all the downstream reactions from this point are going to occur in a twofold manner with the involvement of two molecules of every component at each step. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase changes glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, producing NADH with hydrogen ion from NAD positive. In the next step, 3-phosphoglycerate kinase converts 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate into 3-phosphoglycerate releasing a phosphate molecule and changing ADP into ATP. 3-phosphoglycerate then changes into 2-phosphoglycerate and further into phosphonylpyruvate. This phosphonylpyruvate then releases a phosphate molecule, producing ATP from ADP and changing into pyruvate. This reaction is catalyzed by the pyruvate kinase. The pyruvate then forms lactate as the final product of this pathway, with the help of lactate dehydrogenase, changing NADH with hydrogen ion into NAD positive. Now, let's go back to red blood cells, which carry oxygen to the other parts of the body by forming oxyhemoglobin. A problem arises when they reach the peripheral tissues. They must be persuaded to let the oxygen go. This is done by the phenomenon known as the Bohr effect, which involves two contributing factors, protons and 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate 2,3-BPG. Proton concentration increases because of production of bicarbonate by spontaneous decomposition of carbonic acid, which is formed by the reaction of carbon dioxide entering the cell from the tissues with water in the red blood cells. Increase in the proton concentration releases the oxygen from the hemoglobin. The oxygen then diffuses from the red cell into the peripheral tissues where it binds to myoglobin, which transports the oxygen to the respiratory chain where it is used to produce ATP by oxidative phosphorylation. The other factor that displaces oxygen from oxyhemoglobin is 2,3-BPG also known as 2,3-diphosphoglycerate 2,3-DPG. The 2,3-BPG is formed under anaerobic conditions in the red blood cells by the 2,3-BPG shunt, known as rapoport lubering shunt. The normal glycolytic pathway generates 1,3-BPG, 
which may be dephosphorylated by phosphoglycerate kinase, PGK, producing ATP, or it may be shunted into the lubering rapoport pathway, where diphosphoglycerate mutase catalyzes the transfer of a phosphoryl group from C1 to C2 of 1,3-BPG, generating 2,3-BPG. This 2,3-BPG has a greater affinity for binding with deoxyhemoglobin, stabilizing the structure and preventing it from grabbing hold of another oxygen molecule from adjacent molecules of oxyhemoglobin. The red blood cells transport deoxyhemoglobin and its cargo of carbon dioxide to the lungs, where the partial pressure of oxygen is greater than that of carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is released into the air by breathing and oxygen binds with hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin, releasing 2,3-BPG, which is then catalyzed to 3-phosphoglycerate by bisphosphoglycerate phosphatase. Like any other pathway 2,3-BPG is also involved in health and disease. The first benefit is that it facilitates the transfer of oxygen from mother to fetus. Adults have two alpha chains and two beta chains in their hemoglobin, and 2,3-BPG binds with the beta chains. However, in the fetus, hemoglobin has two alpha chains and two gamma chains. Thus, having low affinity for 2,3-BPG, making the transfer of oxygen from mother to baby easier. The second advantage of 2,3-BPG is that it increases the availability of oxygen to the tissues in high altitudes, where the oxygen is lower, by increasing in concentration. Thirdly, it has been found in increased concentrations in smokers, chronic anemia, obstructive lung disease, congenital heart disease, and cystic fibrosis, probably as compensation for the damaged organs. Lastly, inherited disorders resulting in deficiency of red cell glycolytic enzymes are rare causes of hereditary, non-spherocytic hemolytic anemia, which can be dangerous because RBCs are completely dependent on glycolysis to produce both ATP and 2,3-BPG. The effect on 2,3-BPG metabolism varies according to the type of enzyme being affected and its position in the glycolysis pathway which means proximal to the 2,3-BPG shunt, for an example deficiency of hexakinase, glucose phosphate isomerase and aldolase, the flow of metabolites through glycolysis will be decreased and consequently the concentration of 2,3-BPG will fall. If the enzyme involved is distal to the 2,3-BPG shunt, for example pyruvate kinase deficiency, the concentration of 2,3-BPG will rise. Moreover, patients have been reported with deficiency of the bifunctional shunt enzyme BPG mutase over 2,3-BPG phosphatase. These patients have low concentrations of 2,3-BPG that was all related to anaerobic glycolysis. For more lectures like these, stay connected with scadia.com.